Outer space. Who doesn't love outer space? <laughs> you know, all the mysteries and all the wonders. It's amazing. But with all that endless amount of space, there's one place in particular that stands out as the most unique. Hello, and welcome to the show. Today, we are talking about the Boomerang Nebula. This is known as the coldest place in the universe. Thanks to a couple of Aussies, Keith Taylor and Mike Skerritt back in 1980, we are able to talk about this amazing nebula today. And thanks to advances in science, we are able to share more information than they had in the 80s. What they happened to view in space at that time was a simple uh, asymmetrical boomerang shape, hence the name. 2005 gave us another look that displayed it less like a boomerang and more like a bow tie. Well, that's fancy. 2013, we learned that it actually looked more like this. And that is stunning. And I'm actually just looking at a wall on the other side of my room with a green screen behind me, and I still think this nebula is beautiful. But that's not really a boomerang, is it? All right, well, let's give Mike and Keith a pass, since their view of space in the 80s was limited to the technology of the time. So eventually we learned the true shape of this nebula and also found out that it is absolutely freezing. Well, almost absolute anyway. I mean, technically it's just a few degrees shy of being absolute. <laughs> the coldest temperature of space is just a theory at negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit or 270 degrees Celsius. The Boomerang Nebula is trying its hardest to make that theory a fact as it comes in at negative 457.87 degrees Fahrenheit, or 272.15 Celsius. <laughs> That's about as close as you can get without hitting the mark. For the sake of comparison, the coldest it has ever been on Earth in recorded history was negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or 89.2 Celsius, and that is just about the same temperature as my dad's heart. But that's a conversation for my therapist. Oh, uh, where was I? Oh yes, <laughs> the coldest temperature of space. So, to compare the Boomerang Nebula with the rest of outer space, that would be this, negative 454.81 degrees Fahrenheit, or 270.7 degrees Celsius. This ridiculously low temp means that particles are reaching the quantum minimum speed. And since we know that heat is really just particles moving faster and faster, then it makes sense that they are almost at a standstill here. If they hit full stop, that's when you're at absolute zero. But you, you are an absolute hero if you like this video. So go ahead and click the like button because nobody wants to be an absolute zero. If you wanna visit this nebula, and I'm talking to the people in the future when our tech is ready for light speed travel. So if you want to visit this nebula, then just head toward the constellation Centaurus for about, oh, I'd say about 5,000 light years. So what's the deal with this thing, really? It's called a preplanetary nebula, a stage in stellar evolution, a stage in stellar evolution when a star starts to shed its outer layers before becoming a true planetary nebula. At that point, it will become a white dwarf. It's shooting gas out at around 310,000 miles per hour, or that in, in, in kilometers. We are aware of a bunch of different nebulas in space, thanks to telescopes and cool science stuff, but so far, the Boomerang Nebula is the only one that reaches temperatures this low. That's what makes it so special. Also, the plural of nebula is nebulae, not nebulas, so disregard what I just said a second ago. While the Boomerang Nebula is astonishing to look at and a marvel for space temperatures, it's not the true winner of the coldest temperature. Nope. That award actually goes to us. Yeah, I know I told you that the coldest record temperature on Earth was like negative 128, but this was done in a lab, so it doesn't count when I said it a minute ago. We have actually produced colder temperatures than space has given us right here on Earth. To learn more about that, watch this video from SciShow, where Michael goes into detail about how we reached near zero Kelvin right here on Earth. As always, thanks for watching, and what did you learn today?